Hi, I'm Chad from Chad DIY, and today we are testing out this Kokani EC1 3D printer. It's tiny in size, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for by being the easiest 3D printer I've ever used. So let's get started. All right, as you can see, this is a pretty small printer. Uh, it's just a little bigger than my hand, actually. It comes with a partial enclosure. There is no front door but it is uh, enclosed everywhere else. So now this is an app-based 3D printer, which I run it off my phone, you can run it off a tablet, but you also can link it to your desktop, but basically you're gonna be running it off uh, your phone or your tablet. Now some people hate that concept, some people love it. For me, the ease of use is really awesome. So let's get into the app side of this thing. All right, I'm gonna pull up the app and we'll show just how easy it is to use. So this is the app here. We'll Zoom in, try to get that focused. All right, I think that's a little better. So that's the app. It's a very easy to use app. As you can see, you have create guide and right away you have all these different products that you can, or different, I guess, little models that you can print. Now let's, uh, let's do a vase. I got a few vases printed up already. So we're just gonna click on the, the vase there and we click print. Try to keep this focused for you guys. Now it's loading it up. Now I did already link this in the app. Uh, I did use both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I think it wanted me to use. All right, so now we got that loaded up. We're just going to keep it the same size. We'll hit next. Sorry, we're keep going out of focus there a little bit. All right, start printing. All right, gonna hit start printing again. And then that is, that's all you really, really do. You're gonna hear that beep. It's gonna go through this list of things, checking the device status, that's checked. Validating the 3D model, checked. Filament surplus checks, so we have enough filament. And now it's just preheating and will be printed in a minute. All right, so here's the vase, turned out really nice. Now the incredible part about that whole process is just how easy it is. I was just literally able to click that vase button, just go through the process, really self-explanatory how to do it, and you're printing really fast. And now you're definitely not limited to the items that they have in their own catalog. You can easily import uh, your own files, so STL files. I did that with this tiny little camera here, so I had a large version that I created in Fusion 360 and I imported it into the software online, and then I was able to get it on my phone app. So you're definitely not limited to just what they have for you to choose. You can also go to websites like Thingiverse, download files there, and be printing away on this in no time. So in a typical 3D printer, you would have to go through a slicer program. So you download your file, a lot of people use Kira, and you put in the slicer, and then you have to make all your adjustments for the filament, for the temperature, uh, the temperature of the bed, like there's, there's a lot of little adjustments, how much infill and everything. This just kind of dumbs it down. You don't have to go through any of that. And one of the things that makes it so simple, but also kind of limits you in a little way, is this only prints in PLA. Now most full scale printers, you can print in a variety of different filaments. By limiting this to PLA, it knows exactly what temperature you're gonna be using each time and what is the perfect probably bed temperature and everything. And so it really takes any of the guesswork out of it. I think that really helps for it calculating exactly how to print each item that you're importing in there and it really simplifies the process as well. All right, speaking of filament, this comes as its own proprietary setup for filament. It is PLA filament, but it comes in these cases. Now these cases are set up where they easily just pop into the back of the machine 
and it makes it for pretty simple uh, switch out between different filaments. And now changing filaments, once again, you're gonna go into that app and there's a setting in the app for changing filaments. It's gonna ask you some questions. It also is gonna want you to scan a barcode on the, bo on the box of what the filament came into. Uh, so keep the box if you wanna go that route. I've also just, after print, after I know that the end is hot, I can just pull up the filament that was in there and replace it on its own. Like you don't have to go through quite the steps. That's probably not the official way to do it, um, the official way through the app, and it'll actually uh, back out the filament with the stepper motor or whatever. And so that's probably the recommended way, but there's also a few ways around it as well for replacing it. Now these filament packs, uh, they're around $20 mark, which is about how much you're gonna pay for um, the rolls of filament. You get a little less filament in these packs compared if you get a, a bigger roll. So there's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a balance there where you get a little less filament, but it's probably easier to change that way. And it's kind of an all-in-one system. And they're really focused on, I think, making this as easy as possible for, for, get, for beginners to get started in 3D printing. Now, obviously this is a pretty small printer. Let's pop out that bed size and just kind of see exactly how it is. Now, this is a magnetic bed. Um, it's pretty nice and solid. The material sticks very well to it. And the bed size is four inches by four inches. So um, you're probably actually getting less than that of actual printable space. So kind of take that for what it's worth. It is a pretty small bed. Now, another leading feature of this machine is not the machine itself, but the AI portion of the app. Now the app is set up to where you're going to be able to do modeling by just taking a bunch of pictures going around in a circle. This is in beta testing. I tried it and I just could not get it to work correctly. I know they're still working on improving that function as well as creating your own avatars just through pictures. So it's exciting to see that technology eventually without having to do the actual 3D modeling like in Fusion 360, because that's definitely a learning curve. But to just be able to do a variety of different pictures to create that model is really exciting to see where uh, the future might go with this thing. Now I'm excited to use this more and more in my shop. I have the larger 3D printers, but just the ease of use, and especially for smaller things like this, I think it's gonna be terrific. Now I know the target audience of this machine is, I'm guessing, probably younger people, especially your first 3D printer, guessing anywhere in the range of eight year olds and on, on up. Um, especially if your eight year old knows how to use a smartphone, uh, this is gonna be a great first 3D printer for them. They are gonna be limited maybe as they grow in their 3D printer experience, but then they can always upgrade to a bigger machine. But just starting out, I think this is gonna be a hugely popular machine for younger people. All right, and that being said, if you do have any questions on this Kokanee 3D printer, please leave them in that comment section below. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.